Hey, Phil Steele here. Lightroom has just added new AI masking features for landscape photos, or actually for any photos that include landscape elements. For example, it could be a portrait that has a mountain in the background, or a photo of a building that also has landscape elements in it. These new masks save you time by using AI to automatically select things like plants, ground, buildings, water, and other elements. I found this photo in my collection that contains all seven of the landscape masking categories in one picture. And the categories are sky, mountains, architecture, vegetation, water, artificial ground, and natural ground. Now these mask categories are simply an extension of the existing AI masking features that we've already explored in detail in my Lightroom Made Easy course. So today I won't go into the whole theory of masking and how it works and how you use it on people and all of that. You can get all of that in my complete Lightroom course at steeltraining.com. Today we'll just look at the new features that are part of this new landscape masking panel. As with all the other masking tools, you find this right here in the develop module under the masking panel on the toolbar. And you can see we have a new category here called landscape. And when you click on that, Lightroom automatically scans your photo to detect any possible landscape features that it can find. And you can see in this photo it found sky, architecture, and vegetation. And by the way, if you try this and you find these masking features don't work and they're grayed out and unavailable, like you can see right here, landscape is gray and unavailable, subject, sky, background, none of it works. This usually means that your photo was imported using an older process version in Lightroom. Now this was driving me crazy trying to figure out why these masking tools worked for some photos, but not for others. Well, here's the clue. If you see this little lightning bolt below the histogram, click on it, and you can update the process version for that photo. So I'm just gonna click update. And now, as you can see, the landscape is available and all the masking tools will work. But why doesn't Adobe make this more obvious? And should you just update one photo at a time as needed or should you update all your older photos? This is such a frustrating problem for so many people that I made a whole separate video about it, which I put on YouTube as a public service. You can check that out if you wanna learn more. So when you select landscape, the list of possible masks that you get right here will be different for each photo, depending on which features Lightroom finds in that particular photo. And if you mouse over each one, you can see the part of the photo that Lightroom would mask if you created that one. And they may not be perfect yet, but we can fix that later. And if I click on one of them, I can create that mask by clicking on create mask right here. And if I can click on multiple masks, I have the option to create them as separate masks with this little checkbox checked, which is normally what you'd want to do. If you don't check this box, they'll be combined together into a single mask, but I don't find that very useful. So I normally keep that box checked. So I'm just going to click create mask and it'll create three separate masks for each of these zones. And after you click on create mask, they appear in this little pop out panel as we've seen in the past with other kinds of masks. And if you select any particular mask in this list, you can see the red overlay showing which part of the photo it is masking. And you can turn that overlay on and off by checking that little box or by toggling the O key on your keyboard. And when a particular mask is selected, the whole idea of masks is that now any adjustments you make to the photo will only affect that particular area. For example, with the sky selected, I could change the exposure and it would only affect the sky. That's why masks are so powerful. But before I make any adjustments, I need to clean up my masks. The Lightroom AI doesn't always get it quite right. But that's okay because we have all the mask adjustment tools that we've seen before at our disposal to fix this up. So I'm just gonna reset that slider and we'll clean up the masks before making adjustments. The first big problem I see here is that this sky mask is obviously spilling over onto this Buddha statue. And when I select the architecture mask, I can also see a problem there where parts of the Buddha statue are not included in the mask at all, probably because Lightroom is confusing it with the sky. Now there are a couple of different ways we could fix this. The first way is that I could paint in the part that's missing. So with the architecture mask selected, I could click on it to open it up and then I have a button to add or subtract from this mask. So I could click on add and I could select brush 
and I could come in and I could start painting to fill in the missing parts of this mask. And that's perfectly usable, but we can take a shortcut that'll make this quicker. Instead of doing it by hand, I can click on add and I can say select subject. And if Lightroom is smart enough to know that this Buddha statue is a subject, it'll get it. And there we go. Look how quick that was. Now I don't have to paint it all by hand. And we can also clean up the sky mask in the same way. I'm going to switch back over to the sky and we can see it spills over onto the statue. So I'm going to subtract from the sky and I'm going to select the subject to subtract it from the sky mask. And once again, I didn't have to do all that painting by hand. You can do this in all kinds of situations to save yourself time with masks. Now, this is looking much better, but you can see we still have a problem. Because even though we've got the Buddha subtracted up here, we're on the sky mask and I see some sky down over here that should be included, and it isn't, and some sky over here which needs to be included. So I'm just going to do that with the brush. I'm going to go to Add. I'm going to select the brush. I'm going to zoom in a little to make this easier. And down here, I'm going to start painting with the brush. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I've got auto mask checked right here. When you have nice clean edges like this, auto mask makes it a little easier. You can see how it's finding that edge on its own for me. So there's one little piece. Let's get this other piece. Now I went a little out of bounds there. If I want to subtract that, I can switch to the subtract mask. Select brush, clean that up. Go back to add to finish this off. Make my brush a little smaller to get in here. Now the sky mask is looking much better. Now finally, when I look at this vegetation over here, it seems a little wonky in the way it's intersecting with the sky. So I'm gonna to go to the vegetation mask and I'm gonna do the same trick we tried earlier. This time, I'm going to come in and subtract and I'm going to say subtract select sky from the vegetation mask and that'll clean up the edges in there a little bit. So now that I've got my masks looking better, I can come in and make some adjustments. I usually like to start with the sky Typically with the sky, I like to dehaze a little bit. So I'm going to push up dehaze. And you notice when you move the sliders, the red overlay disappears so that you can see what you're doing. Make the sky look a little more dramatic. Maybe I'll even decrease the exposure on it just slightly. And I'll apply some noise reduction to the sky because after we made those adjustments, it tends to get a little noisier. Now I'm going to flip over to the architecture mask and make adjustments to that part. Now for things like buildings, I often like to push up the clarity a little, which pushes up the contrast and makes them look sharper. I'm also going to bring up the shadows so I can see into this little pagoda thing down at the right hand side. And I think I might give just a touch more saturation to the color on that. And then finally, I'm going to go to the vegetation mask. I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit so we can see the color of the plant a little more. And I'll also push up the saturation just a wee bit on that to make it a little greener. And then if I want to see the combined effects of all the masks that I've done so far, I can just toggle the whole masks panel on and off with the eye up here. So there's before any masking and adjustments, and here's after my adjustments. And you can see it just is a much more compelling photo now. And it was done so quickly by having Lightroom help us separate the photo into these separate zones to work on with different adjustments. That's the power of these automatic AI masks. Now, if you want to learn everything about Lightroom all in one convenient place, you can get my Lightroom Made Easy course on my website at steeltraining.com. I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.